Dehancer is an ultimate film emulation plugin with literally a ton of customizable tools that can almost fully replace your regular color grading program and add a certain look to your image. And you almost cannot achieve this with the regular instruments in any NLE. Today we'll have a look at the tools of this plugin, footage, finished projects, graded 100% in Dehancer, different workflows, nuances of work, and if it's hard to learn and what computer you need to be able to work with it. So let's get it started. I have to mention that YouTube compresses the footage and especially noise a lot. That is why I have uploaded an uncompressed video file to a cloud so you can download it and re-watch this video with true resolution and without heavy compression. The link is below. Also guys, I'm showing you the footage from videos of my big friend and colleague Konstantin Prosnikov. He is a very talented videographer and he kindly let me show his work with the Dehancer on my channel. I'll leave a link to his channel down below, there is a lot of cool stuff, check it out. Dehancer is now available for DaVinci Resolve, Adobe Premiere Pro and After Effects and Final Cut Pro X. Today we'll be working in Final Cut and you can download a two-week free trial version with full functionality and try it out yourself to see if it fits your needs. The main difference between Dehancer and a regular film grain overlay footage and LUT is that Dehancer kinda recreates the image out of grain not just overlaying a repetitive pattern above, giving a different look and what's more important, different feeling about the image. It's all about the feeling in my opinion, because even the creators of the Hanser plugin say that you gotta apply it in a very careful way and the effects have to be subtle, so they subconsciously make the viewer feel like it's been shot on the film and looks cinematic, even though I hate this word and I've said it a dozen times in my videos. By the way, the creator of this plugin is Pavel Kasenko, my compatriot, and he's been in the movie industry working with actual film for more than 30 years, so he's got some experience. And all of the film emulations in the Hanser are actual scans from the real film stocks. That's great. So let me show you a 1 minute wedding video shot on Sony A7S III and Sony 35mm f1.8 lens in s log 3 and fully graded with the Hanser plugin and after that I'll break it down and I'm gonna show you the techniques I used to achieve this result. Enjoy! So guys, welcome to Final Cut Pro 10 and as you can see the shot from the video I've just showed you and here it is in S-Log3 without any adjustments. So if I tap here once again to the effects tab you can see that the Dehancer is my last thing that I add. You can imagine those as nodes and I've just added a couple of things to make the image more polished in my opinion. So add some color board, color wheels as you can see right here, some hue saturation curves, nothing too crazy, just unsaturating some colors and changing the hue a little bit. And one thing that is really important with this plugin is that you have to use the 10-bit camera because you have to apply a lot of adjustments to your color. So Sony a7S III or any 10-bit camera is a perfect solution for this. So let's get to the Dehancer plugin itself. As you can see here, we can apply uh, the camera itself, so we can choose camera or we can use the Rec. 7 Online look, but it looked differently completely. So I would pick choose camera, I would select Sony, I would select Sony a7S III 
and then the camera itself is Sony a7S III has come with 3 Cine S Lock 3 640 ISO. And here is what we get, guys. So you can apply exposure compensation because I always shoot an S Lock 3 just a little bit overexposing, not blowing out the highlights. And as you can see, it perfectly uh, catches the highlights. They are not blown away, not blown out. You can see some information in those. So you can tweak it a lot right here straight away. And so you can also adjust the temperature. As you can see, you can do this amount of adjustment. Let's undo this one because I like this temperature. You can also do some tint adjustments, green and magenta. So it's just the first step that you apply before you start working with it. Then the next one is film. In film, you can pick different film stocks. As you can see, there is a ton of different ones and I've just picked the Fujicolor C200. Uh, nothing to do with uh, C200 cameras, of course, and you can see the push and pull EV. So if we try to tweak this one, you can see that the image is starting to change its color and even the exposure is changing and even the white balance is changing. So I found the best setting to be here. So when you pick any, you can try out pulling this thing here and there to get the perfect result. So you can play around with this one as well. And of course, guys, you can turn it on and off and see the results before and after with the film emulation and without it. And also there is a the fringe option, but I didn't see it make any difference on any setting. I just don't see a difference. So I basically just don't use the fringe function. Probably it's not the best like image for the fringe function, but I just didn't understand quite yet what it does. The next tab is really cool and I use it a lot in my editing experience. So it's the black point. So it basically adjusts the blacks, but it does it in a certain way, in a special way. And I like how it does it. And also the white point. So basically just your whites. And it does it better than the color wheels or the color board, just in my opinion. And I prefer to use this tool to adjust the black levels and the white levels of my image. And of course, you can enable and disable those corrections. The next tab is print. You can use the linear setting or just pick different like uh, Fujifilm or Kodak options. But I would pick linear to my case. So here is the exposure EV value. It's just a regular exposure as we had previously almost. But the greatest thing about it is tonal contrast because it adds contrast in a certain way. It's not just the contrast, uh, you know, um, thing that you apply on a regular basis. Uh, this contrast applies in a different way, which I like a lot. And also the color density is really cool. So as I push and pull it, you can see that the skin tone is really getting touched. And also the colors themselves, like this yellow orangey uh, tram behind the guys, you can see how it changes and it adds kind of a contrast to the color. And it's really nice. And I especially like it for the skin to look more uh, puppy and uh, not puppy like a little dog but uh, it puffs more and of course you can apply your analog range limiter it will kind of squeeze the colors and the exposure a bit uh, looking like more of a log footage so and also you can apply the saturation and enable disable this function as well the next tool is color head and it's kind of your hsi mode uh, hue saturation intensity and here you can uh, just uh, tweak the colors from yellow to blue from magenta to green so it's you know pretty regular too but you can definitely apply it to make the color more pure and to get rid of some parasite colors and here is the impact tab so you can have different impacts so for instance as you can see we had a bit of magenta and just apply the impact like a couple percent and can see the before and after with the enable tool so guys now it's time to talk about the most interesting part and it's the film grain I would apply it to about one or two, um, you know, the size of it, because if you apply it a, a ton more, let's zoom in, zoom in to 100% to my wife's face, I love her. Uh, you can see that it's pretty harsh if we apply the size of 12. So I prefer to leave it at one or two. And also here is the amount of the noise. As you can see right here, I also wouldn't uh, apply it too harsh. Of course, YouTube compression always ruins the image and especially the grain and the noise uh, itself. It's getting mushy and all that stuff, but I hope you can see uh, this through the video compression on YouTube. Also here we have the film resolution. So if it's uh, being 
100% and you can see the sharpness of the image right here. And if we do it like 0%, the image gets much, much softer. And if you want to have this look, uh, you can definitely do it and you can reapply the different amount to different parts of the image. So basically to the shadows. So the shadows are getting more noisy or less noisy, as you can see here. Midtones, the same thing. And also to the highlights, as you can see right here. Clean highlights, noisy highlights. So it's a very versatile tool. You can add some chroma subsampling. I mean, the colorful noise, if you want to, you can get rid of color in your image. I mean, in the noise itself. So you have a ton of uh, things to do. And also you can do the negative film it's more harsh i would say and the positive film it's less harsh and that is why i prefer this one because i like when it's uh, a bit subtle and also you have the digital mode but it doesn't look as good in my opinion kind of blotchy a little bit so i would say the analog mode is the way to go for you and in my video from Lisbon, you can clearly see the settings. So the size was 1, the amount 6, film resolution 100, shadows just a little bit less noisy uh, than the settings uh, that are just stock settings. And the highlights are also a bit less noisy. That's my just, uh, I prefer this one. The chroma is, is here and it's positive, not negative. If we apply it to negative, it's getting a bit too noisy in my opinion. So it's in positive and in analog mode. So the next instrument is halation and as you can see here we have a very bright object and if we apply the halation you can see a little red outline on the contrast and edges let me zoom in to 100 percent to show it to you you can see it right here it's kind of a chromatic aberration but in a different way and if we turn it off you can see that the image is pretty clean and clear we turn it on here is the halation effect we can limit the effect with this source limiter here we have the gain also kind of uh, limiting this thing. The smoothness, it does what it's supposed to. The local diffusion, it can be diffused in a very good way or just as a little color fringing thing right here. Let's do it like so. The global diffusion, so overall, as you can see the whole dress and uh, you know, she is starting to glow with the red. Uh, amplify tool, as you can see, it can become even more amplified. We can change the hue of it, so it can be more of an orangey yellowy or just completely red as a Sith uh, lightsaber probably. And also the blue compensation, we can also do that. And the impact of the whole effect right here and turn it on and off. As you can see guys, this effect cannot be properly uh, viewed in real time with my M1 Pro MacBook Pro 16 inch base model, but if you render it out, it can definitely play it back and the export time is about two times longer than with my regular project, maybe two and a half times. So you have to use a good and powerful machine to be able to work with this footage and to play it back perfectly and also it doesn't come as a native app for apple silicon so when they do kind of rewrite the code for apple silicon it will be much much better but with m1 pro macbook pro 16 inch it does work in a good way so i'm okay with using this plugin i can see the applyment of the effects in almost real time and if i do want to kind of rewatch this segment i just render it out i hit ctrl r it will render the image and i can have a look at it with real time playback uh, as you can see as it's rendered it's playing back perfectly but it's not rendered anymore and it's starting a little bit so keep that in mind guys if you want to use this plugin just uh, download the free trial version and try to work with it in your computer on your computer and to understand if it's okay for you in terms of workflow. So the next effect guys is bloom and as you can see if we turn it on we have this bloom around highlights, the bulky highlights basically or any highlights in your image and we can tweak separately the highlights of it. We can have the source limiter which reapplies the amount of this effect. We can have the details in a different way. We can have the diffusion more or less. As you can see right here, the Amplify tool kind of does the same which Halation does, save lights. Uh, I would prefer to leave it at 100, the saturation effect and the overall impact of it. Let me show you a different example. And by the way, guys, there is the mask mode. So if you tap this one, you can see all of the zones that are being 
um, used and the effect is applied to. So it's a pretty cool feature. You can tweak the image with this one and get several looks and then try to have a look with and without it with and without it so let's get back to my portugal video and as you can see i did apply the boom effect let's disable it and enable it disable enable let's zoom into rui's face so what this does is smoothing out those edges and especially his skin tone. So have a look at this one. So it's not as sharp as harsh and it kind of makes uh, Rui blend into the background more. And I did like this feature. It doesn't look too harsh to my eye. And as you can see, it looks pretty much natural. And it just does a little bit of this uh, kind of blooming and halation effect that helps the image to be not as sharp, not as digital, not as harsh. And here you can see the settings that I applied and I did apply a little bit different uh, like highlight settings and detail settings and diffusion to each and every shot. But all in all, these are the settings that I prefer. They are not too strong to be kind of, uh, you know, <laughs> picking your attention too much. And on this shot, you can also see this effect. Pay attention to her hair and let's disable it and enable and to their skin tone disable enable it kind of glows and it adds uh, more pop to the skin tone which i like the next thing is the vignette and it's uh, also enabled as you can see right here if we enable it it's just cutting a little bit of exposure uh, at the edges and you can tweak it a little bit you can add exposure to the corners you can reduce it you can change the size of the vignette as well and you can change the feather, even do like so. <laughs> so basically it's a very nice and uh, easy to use vignette tool. There are two more tools, Film Breath and Gate Weave. So these are imitating the projector being projecting the image to a wall or something like in the movie theater. So basically if you add it, uh, you add the film breath uh, it will change the color and exposure a little bit uh, so and the gate weave is kind of shaking the image a little bit as well uh, let's apply it like so and try to render this out so basically a static shot would look like it's being uh, projected to a movie theater and as you can see it adds up a little bit of uh, motion to it and also a little bit of exposure changes so it's not obligatory to use those and uh, i didn't uh, really apply a ton of this effect one more feature that i used a ton is the false color tool so if you tap this one you can see the exposure of your image uh, the violet color or the purple one is being totally black like here and the red color is right here so i've been turning on the false color tool and trying to make my skin tone look green most of the time and uh, checking the white point with it so as you can see right now i'm overexposing the sky so i just tried to get rid of the red spots on the sky and if we turn off the IRE you can see that the information is there as you can see from the waveform from the luma waveform as well and right here just by your eye it's not overexposed and the uh, blacks are also in a good condition let me say it's just a bit crashed out in here but it's okay to me so use this tool and also guys you can export the LUT out of this uh, plugin but uh, let me tell you that the blooming effect the halation effect the grain wouldn't be exported so it's only for the color adjustments so it's not as convenient so these are the instruments and guys i wanted to show you the dehancer workflow versus the regular workflow i've been using before that so here is the on top we have the dehancer workflow and if we turn it off on the bottom we have my regular LUTs and uh, just hue saturation curves and color boards. So this is what it was looking like when I was uh, just regularly color grading and applying my usual workflow and here it is with dehancer. So it's uh, to my eye it's more um, pleasing and it's looking in a different way and let me show you a different approach to dehancer not with choosing the camera but with using the regular lots that you like and then applying a dehancer the upper clip is color graded with dehancer only the middle one is color graded with dehancer and my lot so first of all i have converted the footage with my own lot and then i reapplied the dehancer 
and the lowest one is without the dehancer. So here it is, the dehancer only, my lot plus dehancer, and without dehancer at all. My lot plus dehancer, and no lots whatsoever, just the dehancer transform tool. And to be honest, guys, it's working in a better way, in my opinion, with transforming the log from the enhancer itself, not with the lot like I did before. The price of this plugin is $400, definitely not cheap, but you can get a discount from me using the link down below and my coupon code. And also you do get two keys for two different devices when you purchase the enhancer, so you could split the sum with your colleague and $200 doesn't seem to be a big deal, especially considering the functionality that you get with this plugin. I didn't tell you to do so guys, it's not the best way, I think you have to support the creator with a full price, but there is a way around a little bit. To conclude, I've used overlay film emulation footage and LUTs and film convert plugin, but I found the results of Dehancer to be the most filmic and accurate to my taste, and I can totally recommend it. Also it gives you unique instruments, the layout is very intuitive and simple, and the versatility of it has no limits, which I like, because my channel is called No Limits On. Thank you Dehancer for letting me try out and share my thoughts on your plugin. If you did enjoy this video, feel free to hit the like and subscribe buttons as I say in my videos and hit the notifications bell. And here are a couple of videos made with Dehancer plugin, so you can check those out as well. See you in the next episode guys, take care, bye.